What's going on guys? Noah from Kicking the Rest TV. Welcome to Tackle Tuesday number 10. And today's Tackle Tuesday is over one of my favorite baits. I guess you could say pretty much my favorite bait. It's the Fish Head Spin. And I really don't use too many brands on the Fish Head Spin. I pretty much use one brand, which is the original Fish Head Spin by Swarm and Hornet Lures. Um, really great Fish Head Spin. As you can tell, we have a whole box of them. We have plenty more in the back. So I'm pretty much gonna show you guys how I rig it. Um, when when to I have different ways I rig it and when to use it that way um, pretty much if the fish are finicky or if the fish are more active or how the fish are staged um, and then I'll go into the rod and roll combo the line and everything else so let's go ahead and hop into the box and um, let's see what I got going on also not only the fish head spin but I'm going to be talking about the Swarm Hornet Lures dude as well um, which is a little different design which is great as well, but there's different different ways I would fish the two um, depending on how the fish are staged. So starting off with the original fish head spin, I have plenty of them in the box. Um, plenty of different colors and sizes. So as you can tell, there's a couple different sizes right there. Um, but if you guys haven't fished the fish head spin, it's pretty much just a regular fish head um, with a spinner blade on it. Similar to a spinner bait, except it doesn't have the skirt. Um, and I, I would much rather fish this than a spinnerbait. I rarely fish spinnerbaits, to be completely honest with you. Um, so here's a couple ways I would rig it. A um, couple different colors. Here's just like a green pumpkin um, color pattern. Here's one that's white. That's pretty much what I throw. Just pretty much straight up white. If you guys are wondering what um, trailers I'm using, these are Reaction Innovations trailers. This is just a um, white trash color. <laughs> and this is just the green pumpkin color. Um, and these are the little dippers, not skinny dippers. Um, these are the small ones. Skinny dippers are bigger. There's also other ones you can use. And like this, I just have a little fluke on it. This is a zoom fluke. Just depending on the presentation, I'm gonna get into that. Um, this one is actually a Gary Yamamoto saltwater plastic swimming tail. Um, just rig it on here, I can show you. This one's great as well. Honestly, mostly use the reaction ones, but that one's great as well. Um, got that one, and then you can also put like a regular size fluke on here, like so. There you go, like regular size fluke. Give it a bigger presentation, a little less action, um, but you can hop it more and everything. So, when would I use the trailers? These trailers I'm using, like I said, Gary Yamamoto, that's the Saltwater series. Um, that, one's, that one's decent. I like the reaction one a little better. There's just a the regular zoom super flute that's in white color. Um, there's the little dippers. And that, instead of green pumpkin, that's called bullfrog in the reaction. Um, and I just have a couple different colors in the reaction ones. But what would I use which? So, reaction ones, like I said, is mostly what I use. Um, most of the time, the fish are going to bite it. If you have this reaction one, they're going to bite it. But sometimes fish are just really, really, really finicky and you're really gonna have to finesse for them. And that's more of when I'll switch over to fluke style bait like this. And depending on how aggressive they are, how finicky they are, you even, you can adjust from here. You can go to a bigger size, or if they're not biting as well, if you notice that they're just biting the tail or not eating it all the way, or if you notice you're getting short bit, they might might be even biting the, um, just the blade. So can go over to a smaller presentation like that, which is really great. Um, really imitates the bait fish really well with that one. Um, this one is a little bigger size. I'm gonna just stick to the smaller sizes. That's just personal preference. Also, if they are, if you do, say you're throwing a small one like this, and you know that it's a pecker head if it's just biting it right here. Um, but you're not really sure what's going on. You're getting those bites, you're just, when you go to hook set, you're just not, there's not a fish on it. But you know you're getting the bites and you don't know what's going on. You're thinking they're biting the end of the tail. Most of the time they're biting this blade. 50% of the time they're biting this blade. What you can do is you can get a little hook and you can put a hook on the blade. Which is great as well. But I can tell you one thing. The way you work this, or the way that I work it to catch fish, and you're gonna, the way you're going to want to work it, the most productive way to catch those fish, you're going to get snagged up a lot. Um, you're going to get stuck on those brush paws, you're going to get stuck on those limbs, those rocks everything that's the only bad part about putting a hook on the blade but if you're out there fun fishing and everything heck just throw it right there. um i wouldn't even worry about that but now let's go ahead and jump on to the dude 
This is a dude by Swimming Before I Lose. Um, it has this little lip right here. And in the water, it goes back and forth. Um, back and forth motion. Just kind of wobbles. On these, I do not put the paddle tails. I just put the standard old flukes on. Um, for the reason why I put the standard old flukes and not the paddle tails is because it has so much action in the first place. <laughs> I mean, with this paddle tail, it just goes back and forth, goes crazy. It has a lot of action to it, guys. There's no need for a paddle tail. Um, it has tons of action with that on. It's just when this thing's going back and forth, that tail is just going. You know, that's pretty much what it's doing like this. Um, so it has plenty of action with just that regular tail. That's all you need. So when when would I throw the scrounger head or the dude by Swan Hornet lures or the fish head? There, just depending on where the fish are staged. Say we get out there, we look on the graph, we see the fish on the bottom. And I and I could pick I could pick between this, and pick between this. I mostly throw the fish head spin. Fish head spin. I mostly only run on the bottom. There's rarely times I'm running it off the bottom. Um, sometimes I'll be running it a little bit off the bottom, just depending on where the fish are staged. Fish are on the bottom, I'm running it directly on the bottom. If fish are five foot off the bottom, I'll count it down and I'll reel it up a little bit to where I'm a little bit off the bottom. Um, just really locating those fish to figure out where they are at in the water column. But say you go out on the lake and those fish are in the um, upper water column or they're in the mid mid to upper water column. Um, go ahead and throw the scrounger. These are great on like shallow water humps. When you have those um, shallow water poles sticking up, we used to throw these up there on the near and just hammer the fish. It's crazy, the spotted bass just tear it up. Um, when we first started fishing, I haven't been fishing long. Um, that's pretty much one of the first baits I threw is the dude by swimming hornet lures. And we would just crush them. We had some days going out there, we would catch 30 spots. Um, they are just tearing it up, you know, in a few hours catch 30 fish, it's pretty good. Um, but it all depends guys, it all depends where the fish are staged for the most part. So what type of rod and reel would I throw for the dude by swimming hornet lures or the fish head spin? Um, and if you guys don't know, that's pretty much what the Bassmaster Classic this year is one on, was fish head spin. Um, not the swimming hornet lures one, but it was a fish head in general, which this is the original one, the first one ever made. Um, so in my opinion, it's the best designed one. Um, and we actually fished the high school Bassmaster Classic, and all the fish that I caught were on fish head spin. Um, so it was, it's just a really great bait. I use it year round and seem to catch good fish on it. Um, but the rod I'm using it on is a Legend Extreme by St. Croix Rods, and this is a medium heavy. I usually don't like to go heavy, and I don't like to go below medium heavy, like medium. I want a little bit of backbone, but I don't want too much backbone to where it's going it's to hinder me. To hook the, set those fish and not get the hook in them. Um, that's another big thing. When you're hook setting these fish, I don't like the hook set up. If I hook set up, what happens is this bait's gonna go like that. You don't want that hook to go like that. You want it to go penetrate into the fish's mouth. So honestly, on these, you don't even have to hook set. And what I mean by that, I'm not saying just reel the fish in. I'm saying swoop sideways, like you're working, say you're working a top water bait when fish hits it, you most likely hooks that sideways. You just drag the hooks into the fish. Same concept with the fish head spin. You're just going to drag sideways and catch the fish in the mouth. That's the best way to catch the most fish. Um, hook up ratio is way up there when you hook that sideways. Um, the reel is on a Reba MGX and this is a 7 1 to 1 gear ratio reel. Really great reel. As you guys know, this is my favorite combo. Can't go wrong with it. Um, really great. And the line that I use, I mostly stick to 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, I'm not going to want to use mono. Too much stretch, floating line, don't use mono, you're wanting to run this on the bottom. Don't use a braid, um, again, floating line, and the fish can see the braid, in my opinion. Um, so fluorocarbon, 15 pound, 15 pounds is gonna be in that good medium range, no need to go higher, no need to go lower, I mean, you can go to 12 pound, um, I wouldn't recommend 10 pounds. So 12, 15 pound is great for the fish head spin. And also the dude, I would run these on the same combo. I wouldn't have a problem with it. Just a regular medium heavy power rod. This one has a fast action tip because I like a little bit of tip on my rod. Um, and 7 one to one gear ratio reel. I wouldn't really, really on like a five to one or a nine to one um, or six four to one. Just seven one to one simple to me. Mostly all the reels I own are seven one to one gear ratio reels. 
um, five, five to one gear ratio reel. It's just so, it's slow, and you're gonna wanna reel these baits slow, but it's just sometimes to the point where you don't want it that slow. And seven one to one, I can get control if I want it fast, if I want it slow, it's just more in the medium. So, um, that's the rod and reel combo. Well, I hope you guys got some tips out of this, and if you guys want any more information on this, if you have any more questions, leave a comment below, I'll get back to you. Yes, it is hard for me to get to your comments, but I will get back to you eventually. I'm just giving some time on that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are interested in the dude or fish head spin, definitely go check them out. They're by Swarm and Hornet Lures. You can check them out on their website. So until next time, guys, make sure you check out my latest videos. I'm gonna have the tournament video um, where I actually won on Hartwell. Definitely go check that out if you haven't already. Check out last week's Tackle Tuesday which was over reels you guys were really wanting to watch that so or you guys were really wanting that video so definitely go check it out blow it up it's at like 2500 views right now let's hit it up to 10,000. come on let's go well until next time guys stay tuned for more videos remember tuesday friday and sunday see you guys next time